Hi, we're the R&D guys at Component Supply Company. And as you know, we sell a lot of different tubings. Uh, many of them are rigid, but probably the largest percentage of them are flexible or soft. One of the common problems that many of our customers have is that they're trying to match up an existing tube that's on a piece of equipment, but they don't know exactly what it is. So while the size is not the complete answer, it is a starting point. So we thought we'd do a quick video showing you how we measure tubing here in our shop. And that way, the next time you have a project or a problem, it'll give you a starting place as well. Sometimes your project will call for a tube like this that's very rigid and fairly easy to measure. Other times it might be something like this silicone that's quite spongy. And so the problem is, how do you measure it without collapsing it? So that's, the, that's what we're going to look at today. Regardless of what type of tubing you're using, the starting point is always the same. It's to determine what the inside diameter is. So using a caliper, we'll do our best to get some general idea of what the inside of that tube is, coming up with about 121. So we'll go over here and we'll find the 120 pin gauge. Try it. It's actually fitting a little bit loosely. So we'll go up a couple of thousandths, 122. Starting to get pretty good. Let's, I think we'll try, try the 122. Then what we'll do is we'll take the pin, the caliper again, and now without depressing the, the OD, we'll come up and try to get a good feel for what the OD is. And that's coming up with 0.248. So this gives us a starting point for where the tubing would measure. Now that we've got a good idea of what the ID and the OD is, we need to do a little math to come up with the wall thickness. So what we're going to do is we'll start out with the OD of 0.248. We'll subtract the ID from that of 0.122 and that gives us a balance of 0.126. Because there's two walls, we'll divide the 126 by 2 and come up with a wall thickness of 0.063. And that's going to give us the three elements we're going to need to begin to go look at resources to try to identify this tubing. Whether they present it as ID and OD or ID and wall, we'll have everything we need to, to basically shop around. All right, let's say in this hypothetical exercise we're doing that PVC tubing, a basic PVC tube, is what we're looking for in our application. So what we want to do is go back to the numbers we've calculated, go to the resource that we're using, and try to find the tube that most closely lines up with what we know to be true. Um, when you get to this page, the first thing you discover is that they listed in fractions as opposed to decimals. You may find on another page that it is called out in millimeters. So you may have to do some additional math but we've still got all the things we need to make a selection. In our case, this is a fractional chart, so we're going to go to the ID, and we're going to see that we have 0.122. The closest fraction I can come up with to that is an eighth of an inch, or 0.125. So I'll start with what they offer in an eighth inch ID tubing. From that, I'll look at my options of ODs, and here's an option for a quarter of an inch. We had 0.248, so that's within two thousandths of the quarter of an inch. So I can be pretty safe in saying that this is a one-eighth ID by one quarter inch OD tube. Just to be on the safe side, I'll check what their wall call out is. It is a sixteenth of an inch, and that matches very closely our 0.063 that we, did, we got when we did the math. So I think we're reasonably safe in selecting that particular part number, or that particular tube, as a replacement tube for what we're working with. 
We've talked about the process needed to work with rather large tubes like this. But in the medical world, we're faced with working with very, very small tubes. So with that, you obviously can't use a caliper to determine what the ID is. So with it, you've sort of got to go directly to the pin gauge. Just coming up with a as best guess you can, we generally try to start off smaller and try a tube. In this case, an 031, it's too loose. Let's go up maybe an 038. It's too large, so we're going to be in between. We'll take an 036. It fits, but not very loosely. Let's take an 035. Here we've got a good fit. It's snug, but it's not expanding it. So we're going to take an 035 and call that the ID. And then we can, with it holding the ID in place, we can now take a caliper and come up with a .047 OD. So now we've got the necessary information to make a selection on a tube that's very, very small. As always, we hope you found this to be helpful. If you've got any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. That's what we're here for.